Hey guys, it's Carl. So we're kicking off the new year 2023 with the best budget tech uh, underneath that $100 mark. I know as things get uh, pricier and pricier, it's kind of tough, but as I've come back from CES this year, there's actually some MVP pieces that uh, are of course in that budget range. But before we start the episode, had to clear away uh, some giveaway stuff. So I know that I had my gift guide episodes from the end of uh, December. I'm gonna flash on screen right now, all of the winners I've DM'd you privately uh, on social sites. So a uh, big congrats to you. I'll give you around 48 to 72 hours to respond before I repick the winners. And I know that YouTube is dealing with a shitload of spam right now. So uh, people impersonating me, trying to uh, message you saying, uh, connect with me on Telegram. Um, you've won something, pay for shipping. I never, never do that. So I'm only DMing people through my verified sites. So either Instagram or Twitter. So make sure you're following me over there and uh, we'll kick off this episode. If you like anything you see, just make sure to uh, leave that comment down below. Obviously uh, you're subbed, hopefully you are. And um, I did go down to CES for a fossil watch, but a lot of you were DMing me. Are there other watch options? So I'm kind of kicking off the episode, not so much in the tech space. It, is a piece of tech, technically a watch. So this is a Casio G-Shock. So it's one of the coolest watches, I think, under that $100 mark. If you're familiar with watches at all, G-Shocks are kind of famous in the space. Obviously, they're not mechanical. They obviously don't have that hefty price category. You can often pick up a G-Shock for underneath that $100 mark, and they keep time better than my watch, actually. This one's a little Herschel G-Shock uh, collaboration. I think uh, G-Shocks are pretty dope. I do swap mine out from time to time, and this is probably the best watch that you can get uh, for that $100 range. I was uh, watch shopping in Vegas. Um, I'll leave this uh, little photo here. I'm still technically on the wait list, but we will see. If you are um, big on the smartwatch game, so say you have an Apple Watch, I know that swapping out bands is the biggest way to make your watch um, a bit more customizable, a bit more unique. This is the new Nomad Orange band, specifically made for the Apple Watch Ultra. I know that all Apple Watch bands are interchangeable, so if you have Series 7, if you've got an SE, you can swap it out. Obviously, the big reason why I love it, it's obviously orange and I'm a big rubber watch strap guy. So obviously on my watch right now, that is rubber. And I like it more than ballistic nylon, anything that kind of collects dirt over time because you tend to wear your watches when you work out, when you swim, when you shower, all those materials kind of fade over time. And that's why I'm a huge fan of the rubber. It wears easy. You never need to worry about it uh, wearing out as it's pretty much indestructible. And Nomad just dropped their yellow band option if, um, that's kind of your jam, but um, yeah. But nevertheless, a solid accessory option, and if you're looking to match your uh, watch strap to say your phone case, Nomad has you hooked up with a orange case as well. So I think this is a dope combo, both a little bit on the price yen for accessories, but uh, definitely under that uh, $100 mark. So I know on the channel, I typically up these uh, Logitech MX Master 3S mouses. The one I actually took with me to uh, CES was this uh, Logitech MX Anywhere. It's slightly smaller, easier to fit into a travel pack or into a little case when you're on the go. I think these are great if you're someone that uh, switches between uh, business meetings. If you're a student, you just want something smaller to throw in your bag. I know that mice, Mouses aren't uh, the biggest thing, but I think every bit of space uh, makes the difference. So they're just a bit of a smaller profile. They're thinner and of course they are cheaper as well. So I swear by them. This year, uh, one of my tech goals was to not use the trackpad as much as um, I find that since I travel a ton, I just tend to be on my MacBook trackpad and I just want to stick to a mouse. It's easier on the wrist and I'm way more productive. So definitely under $100 grabbing a mouse is a must. Another big MVP in my travel game, uh, I actually broke my record uh, last year for most uh, flights. I think I traveled over uh, 200,000 miles, so like 300 something thousand kilometers, 210 hours on an airplane. Just having an air tag in my luggage gives you that peace of mind of um, where your bag is in space. So if you land somewhere, um, like I was just in Vegas, I quickly just pop up the Find My app. I can tell if my bag is in fact with me or it's back home where it missed its connection. It's in another country somewhere. It technically doesn't uh, get your bag back, but at least when you're talking to um, airport authorities, trying to locate your bag, you kind of know where it is. So it just gives you that extra peace of mind. Obviously under a hundred bucks, but uh, you can get the pack of four, I think for 90 
eight-ish dollars. So air tags, once again, um, by the time you're watching this video, I'm on my next um, trip. I should be in Mexico for the e pre or the first Formula E race uh, of the year. So this will be in my suitcase. So the next piece of tech uh, you've seen on the channel, this is typically in my $25 episode. So this is the Manfrotto mini tripod, super versatile. But when I was away uh, at CES, I actually had to do a bit of a live stream with Fossil. I created this little mini tripod for my phone. So this is just something I picked off of Amazon. It's a phone holder, but has these nice little grips. So I think this combo was at 25 bucks, 20 bucks for this. You can kind of see how quickly this screws into place. And as an example, I can place my phone in the middle, so great for that live stream that I did, but this little mounting rack up top is what makes it really cool. So it actually has these three little, uh, I think they're called cold shoe plates that you can add extra accessories. So if you want, you can add a microphone. I actually had this uh, little light here. This little light is another piece of tech on the episode. It costs exactly under $100. And it did have this little hot shoe connector, which I unfortunately took off and forgot at home, but that essentially slid into place on this little tripod setup. So I had a full light vlogging rig for my live stream. And because a CES has the worst lighting available, it's a showroom or it's a conference with bad lighting. Just having this little pocket key light is great. So with this, you can actually change the color temperature and the intensity all the way from uh, 99. If I actually just click this up top, you can see it goes all the way down to technically zero or uh, 1%. So really handy to have. It's magnetic as well. So if there is a magnetic surface, you can just like click it into place, you won't even need this. But this uh, entire combo, so this was 20, 20, and this light a uh, $100. So great for people just producing content on the go if you just want a one-stop shop, everything kind of fits into place and you can be the ultimate vlogger extraordinaire. Another great piece or travel hack, I know that a lot of us carry a ton of gadgets around, so this is actually way under 100 bucks. It's essentially just a supercharger. You can get one cheaper off Amazon. This one specifically is from Samsung and it has three different ports, so two USB-C and a classic USB-A for all of those uh, older pieces of tech, like that fossil watch I actually had to charge. This actually has a fast charger, so you've got a 65 watt, 25 watt, and a 15 watt respectively. Just great to juice up multiple devices. I know that uh, we typically have our smartphones. I actually was charging up my camera on the go. And like I said, that fossil watch. So three devices were charging at once. Usually uh, when I was at lunch, uh, crushing back some pizza and um, the expensive, expensive um, water or Gatorade at CES, I just had this plugged into an outlet to keep all of my devices uh, nice and charged up as I'm on them the entire day. Just a nice little power brick to have is pretty clutch. So next off, we have three things and they all kind of work together all around that hundred-ish dollar mark. So at CES, we shot close to a terabyte of footage over the three days while we were there. So on my SD card, so I'm gonna show you the one that I typically use. This one's from Lexar. I know it's over a hundred dollars. It's uh, just, of course, the read and write speeds that make it so quick, but if you are looking for a card that has similar space, but slower read and write times, this one from SanDisk is a step lower. It's $100, and as long as you're willing to wait those extra maybe couple minutes if you have a ton of footage, I think you can get by fine. Obviously, you can't uh, shoot uh, 4K 120 on this. You'll need the faster cards for this, but I think most people still shooting 1080p, uh, even if that's 120 FPS, or even 4K 30, you can get by on these gold cards. And with all that footage, obviously dumping onto the MacBook Pro. Just having something like a USB-C dongle slash dock makes it so much easier. For whatever reason, um, MacBook Pros have been struggling with their SD card reader. I know that uh, myself and Nick, his uh, laptop also, the SD card slot just doesn't work half the time. So just having a little USB-C dongle, you can actually stick uh, a couple devices through it. So if you have HDMI 2, display port, an extra USB-C port, and of course the SD card slots, and it also has micro SD if that's your jam. So with that uh, close to terabyte of footage that we shot, uh, just to keep things off of the MacBook, we just had these Lexar uh, SSDs, just super, super handy to have lying around in your bag. I think this one has 500 gigs. So we filled up uh, with the first day of footage. I think all the Mercedes footage that we shot was just that uh, place on this hard drive so we can kind of pass them between us if we're uh, working on an edit, which we kind of got out pretty quickly. Once again, under $100 all of these minus this card. If that's not in the budget, uh, just go for these um, SanDisk gold cards. 
And that's pretty much all of the tech that I brought with me. The last thing, just because I have this uh, off on uh, B-roll here, I just saw it. It's under $100. It's this little uh, walnut uh, pen stand from Grovemade. I know a ton of you have asked about it in my initial uh, desk setup video of the year. I forgot to include it as it was uh, sitting on my desk. Just a cool way to keep uh, accessories on your desk organized. So you can see I've got my Apple Pencil, I've got some stationery here, and I've got uh, my Apple TV remote as well as unboxing night all just in one nice place. I know Grove made uh, make some pretty nice stuff. It's made out of real natural wood. It's expensive for a pen holder for uh, I think close to $100. But um, if you're a bit baller this year, you wanna treat yourself to some nice desk accessories because if you sit at it for what? Seven-ish, eight hours a day, just uh, rock out in your desk setup space. Make it nice, make it fancy because um, you're spending extra time there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was the first uh, budget one of the year. I know you guys love these episodes. Remember all of these stuff that I mentioned will be linked down below. Uh, make sure you're subbed to the channel. Follow me over on social. That's my shameless plugs for the day. I'll catch the rest of you in one uh, of my next ones. Peace.